Um, obviously, this story, courtesy of GQ, regarding Martin Rowe, which I thought was fairly, fairly, fairly upsetting, to be honest, regarding, you know, how hard it was and how difficult it was to set up her brand and being surprised at her success. This is courtesy of GQ magazine.co.uk. You see here the lovely Martin Rose featured front and center. I think one of the bits that sort of stood out to me was um, a section that she mentions about her kind of come up and about the realities of sort of like starting a business in fashion. And I think I was speaking a, bit, a little bit about it to, with a friend earlier about this industry at large and, you know, being such huge fans of it you know since i was a kid and shit but then also being very aware that just because i'm a fan of something doesn't mean that's necessarily going to equate to me loving working in the industry and then having to work in there and having my kind of assertions confirmed it was just upsetting to see somebody on martin rose's level which is way higher than anything that i ever ascended to essentially echoing the same sort of thought so let me see if i can quickly find it here so we can read but let me see i think it's here um, let's see um da -da -da -da. So let's, let's read the article anyway, then we can go through it. It's not really a long one. It's cut to GQ. It says, um, being a fashion designer is a tough gig. Caesar collections are expensive to produce without coming from a place of real privilege or attaching yourself to a giant fashion house. It's almost impossible to make it work. It's been really difficult, Martin Rose, who has headed up her own label since 2007, says of a Zoom. From her airy North London studio, I yeah, was unsure for how long that I nearly gave up. Sometimes I still think about it. It isn't easy. Oh, hell no, she says. When Rose was younger, her older relatives were deep-rooted in 90s rave culture, and she became accustomed to seeing them in Versace shirts and Machino jeans, something that I also grew up with, seeing that around myself. Um, I remember when I was growing up, the sort of like, the kind of the flossy thing that a lot of the olders used to wear was that they'd wear like Versace shirts, Armani exchange shirts, Tommy Hilfiger shirts with machino jeans, straight cut, and then they'd wear like Air Max 95. So you'd get like Air Max 95s, Air Max TNs, TLs, whatever Air Max you could get from like, you know, Foot Locker because at the time, Air Maxes back then, especially 95s and TLs and TNs, they were essentially like 130 pounds plus. Um, I remember at one time, actually, even 98s might have been like 160 or something in Littlewood's catalog. So they were really expensive items back then, those type of shoes. So they were a real sign of like you making money. So those, those were basically before like designer sneakers came about. The only designer sneaker I remember having or seeing people wear back in the day were like the Prada American Cups. And sometimes, you know, in my area, we'd wear those American Cups as like school shoes. Remember, that's why I used to wear mine as. Um, I had like four pairs or three pairs, actually. I think I bought two from Dawson Market that obviously weren't real and then one that was kind of a second hand that was real. So those are the kind of three pairs I kind of had in terms of Prada shoes back in the day that you'd kind of wear. So I definitely remember that era. It says, um, my cousin Darren was into Boy London. Oh, yeah, I remember that brand also. And he gave me a T-shirt, which was my most treasured possession. I still have it today. It's super thin. It has a big acid smiley face on the front. I knew it represented something. It had a power over the government. I knew it meant something. I knew it represented a sort of mystery to the world. And it was then I understood the power of clothes. But Rose, I at first, didn't realize she wanted to career in fashion. She did a foundation course at Camberwell College of Arts. And after a, molded, uh, and after a module sorry, focused on textiles, she realized that working in industry was something that she'd be down with. She enrolled in fashion design at Middlesex University and found out in menswear i love the fact that she didn't go to all the conventional ones there's no you know um ual central st martin sort of nonsense here she went to all the ones that back then you were told that if you went to these colleges to do fashion you might as well not bother you know what i mean that's kind of how they made it so they sold it to you that's probably the reason why i end up going to you know fucking um that's why i probably end up going to fucking um central st martin's myself because I generally did think that if I didn't go to any other design school apart from St. Martin's, that I wouldn't be able to design fucking, you know, furniture and products and shit, which is absolutely stupid. But hey, um, whatever. So clearly it's good to see that she did that. It continues. It's after graduating in 2002, she set up her t-shirt line LMNOP with a friend, Tamara Rothstein. We were really bored. Basically, we did 10 t-shirts. We had a friend running a showroom during London Fashion Week and they impressed buyers. Um, they really did surprise us, but LMNOP P success didn't last largely because the pair wanted to explore new ventures and their brand folded yet rose had a taste for designing she applied for a loan um, of 1500 from the printers trust which was granted and in 2017 set up her opinions label so i wonder if that brand is still around if people still have some lmnop lying around that they're probably still holding on to that that'll probably 
fetch a decent price you could probably have it in your archive and shit so that's pretty cool to see another one here says the british jamaican designer signature a conscious celebration of walks of life notably those of periphery is joined together by leather chaps and a double breasted blazer that share the the it's short of a work weary as interrogation of it's an in, integration sorry of men's fashion works i've always been drawn to the way men are told to dress I've always wanted to my collections to feel quite eclectic. I like to play around with pink in particular, she says. An all winter 2013 bubblegum fluffball coat and a flash, flashing chap spring to mind. For a recent spring 2024 show stage in a packed out community centre north London, Rose pushed this further. Muscle guys wore um, housery drawn up um, to the ankle below barely their vest and they wore bubblegum pink belts wearing cutesy little heart-shaped claps vest was cut so low the nipples were intentionally on display which i love again this is one of my favorite collections from her i'm still in love with these fucking pants so big up her but those early years in her own words were hell which is the surprising bit about it right she says rose was making no money i was working in bars as i designed clothes in my free time i was never really solely into fashion i couldn't care too much about martin rose i didn't make enough money to pay the rent she admits explaining that although she deemed cool for going against the typical fashion week schedule it was never intentional i had no money to show she says um of the catwalk shows can easily cost up to six figures six figures for a catwalk show can you imagine that um at times i didn't really know what i was doing so i worked and failed quietly in the background um fashion eases lulu kennedy and writer charlie porter big up him um, he's got a great book out i remember i think called what artists wear i definitely need to check out and pick up and of course lulu kennedy is a fucking og in the scene um it says i was happy to just work in a bar just for the rest of my life she says but i had um but i had just right the amount of interest and support to make me not stop so in 2015, after years of grafting, Rose received an email from Balenciaga's newly appointed creator director, Demna Vasilia. Um, some would call it a dream, except Rose had never ever dared to dream about it. He somehow seen what I've been doing and wanted me to consult for him. Um, that led to further recognition. My brand began to make money. It was like someone had flipped the switch and we were suddenly commercial. And now here collab, the, 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 the kind of. So it's just funny to just see that somebody on fucking Martin Rose level could be flipping working at a bar struggling to fucking pay rent from her clear obvious talent it goes to show just how fucking fraught the industry is just how difficult it is to kind of make it happen especially if you're on the kind of design side of things even just working in a showroom as an assistant as a fucking buyer wherever it may be back behind the scenes it must be so hard because from what i remember getting into the scene or in the industry sorry it's obviously an industry that a lot of people are passionate about like you know there's a lot there's probably too many people and not enough jobs and the ones that do get the jobs don't ever leave because it's obviously a job of your dreams right to be surrounded by clothes to be going to all the fucking fashion weeks to be at fucking press shows to be invited to all the cool store openings and private views and meeting all these interest industry people and parties and whatnot it's a really interesting life and a cool life if you like that sort of stuff but but clearly it's a very competitive industry to get involved in and you know the money isn't the greatest as well especially if you're just doing this sort of like cool as type of stuff most of those things don't really pay that well so it's fairly difficult to kind of get a strong footing into it but it's just wild to me that somebody as talented as marty rose was in that position if not worse but you know through some lucky breaks here and there she was able to kind of strive and progress and to get to the point where she is now that kind of allowed the kind of brown to kind of flourish and get to a point where it is now so it's kind of great to see that the story kind of panned out but as per usual it is a bit of a cautionary tale to say that you know nothing is sort of promised in fashion nothing is kind of this you know you don't really you're not in, entitled to anything just because you have like i have you know extensive knowledge about collections and you know about some industry politics type of shit and you know you can recognize brands all the stuff doesn't matter you really have to show and prove um when given the chance and even then there's no guarantee that you're going to get a job for life there's no guarantee you're going to get any type of opportunity really and truly so big up martin rose for continuing to strive and prosper and to kind of get over the line and i'm glad it kind of worked out for her all going forward so that's courtesy of flipping gq if you want to read the entire thing you can um link will be in the description for you to check out if you do link will be in the description if you want to check out if you do 
moving on from that one we have this also sort of talk about which is courtesy of hype beast which features martin rose's um collection courtesy of nike football um they're doing a collab which i actually saw the women's i think the american women's teams wearing the other day when they played a friendly um i'm not really into it personally um the only thing that i'm probably a little bit interested in are the nike shocks these sort of mule things that she's got collab that she kind of does but if you look at the kind of clothes themselves she's essentially made this um really um upscaled luxe i guess you call it tailored collection for the women's football team in some way shape or form with a lot of nice bits of tailoring in terms of shirts and trousers and shit which looks really cool in terms of you know imagine it being a collection that's made between martin rose and nike and you've been able to make trench coats and scarves and trousers and button-up shirts and shit i feel all of that stuff looks really decent i definitely did see somebody like i said before in margate wearing a pair of these martin rose mule shock things which look really good they're a lot more pointier and longer in real life i guess because i was a dude also so he had bigger feet so he looked way longer but they did look really good with the kind of socks pulled up towards the knees like you're playing football and i think he had on some you know faux football shirts and a faux football you know shorts and shirt and he looked really great to be fair i saw this guy in margate wearing it so I'm kind of thinking maybe I need to get a pair of those fucking Nike shocks myself. There's a pair of glasses included in the collection, which looks fucking banging too. These some these visors that got Martin Rose written on the fucking bar here. You got Martin Rose Nike swoosh, Martin Rose Nike swoosh. These look fucking great. I love the look of those. Again, see some of the detail and the tailoring of the jackets on the on the blazer here with the with the fucking swoosh in the front. Same thing goes for the shirts which made out of interesting fabric in it the fabric is interesting because it looks like the same fabric you'd get from a football shirt but it's just been made into a button-up shirt which looks really interesting i'm not really too mad at that i'm not mad at that in the slightest the execution is very great great bit of tailoring there looks like it fits our figure amazing with the little label here just above the pants i love the look of those that logo here with the ball of swooshes is really cool also on the shirts and again here are the martin rose shock mules they're a very marmite shoe um regular shocks are a little bit more rounded at the front and i don't think they're as high and clearly it's a mule it's not like a sneaker i still would have preferred if she did did these in a sneaker just for once I'm not sure if that's ever going to happen but i would like to see them made in like a regular sneaker and just without the mule maybe they've come out already i'm not really too sure but i do still like them as a sort of like risque fashion shoe because i like the fact that, that whenever martin rose has collaborated with nike she's always done stuff that's a bit you know a little bit more out of the ordinary it's not just a conventional sneaker collab she's always kind of challenged the consumer um to kind of you know try some interesting things with different shapes and shit um this kind of yellowy uh orange colorway is really nice with the neon there you've got a nice little teal with the purple colorway there also and yeah i'm not really too mad at it in the slightest i think it looks really good let's read the flipping blurb it says british jamaican i love when they always do this with with fucking designers a british jamaican as if like this influences anything that you do or matters really in the in the, whatever uh, let me just read the thing it's the british jamaican designer recognized for a boundary breaking approach to traditional menswear and often pays tribute to her home grounds rose pre recently presented her spring 2024 collection in north london after much speculation or anticipation sorry the former has finally arrived nike officially uh, revealed in the march rose's next partnership take inspiration from female football players and genderless traditional tailoring the collaboration opens the doors to a next generation of football enthusiasts dissolving gender stereotypes in sports i guess because she does it in her own collections right she i don't think there is such a thing as martin rose women's or men's it's all just kind of you know gender neutral shit um which kind of is cool it kind of is gender neutral but kind of isn't because you know the girls wear basically the girls items in some respects so you know it's, it's, it's suggestive neutrality let's call it that um the collection emulates traditional player wardrobes from getting off the plane to arriving on the pitch the offering to keep female players suited and booted for the next match featuring tonally stripped co-branded shirting with custom football patches football suits are done up with the faint indentations and swoosh chest embroidery which trench coats boast um, additional sleeves that loops through to the front visor like sunglasses and stockings and gloves complete the accessories lined as for the footwear mantra introduces the second nike shock mule um mr4 installment uh, the previous pair released were white and black blah, blah blah take a closer look and the collection will be available on the 25th uh, via martin rose um, and on sneakers on the 27th so if you want to get a 
bit of look closer look at those so you want to purchase them yourself check them out on those particular dates the martin rose and nike football collection is there and ready to go so check that out if you're that inclined